something about the Psalms I really love. You know, I love the honesty of it, the rawness. You know, it's something childlike. Uh, I mean, you say he's brutally honest. They are prayers. They are prophetic prayers. It's not just poetry, but it's poetry on fire. You know, so when you put a melody to something like the Lord is my rock, my strength, my shield, my strong tower. You know that heaven is agreeing with you. The Psalms were intended for corporate use. And when you sing straight from the word, you're not only singing to Jesus, but you are singing Jesus because he is the word and he is perfect theology. Oh God, you
nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. So I fix my eyes on you, my God. Greetings. Thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. As always, it's our joy and delight to come your way and spend some time with you. What we like to do on the program today is something very simple. We just like to read a psalm and uh, just reflect on it, share a few thoughts on the psalm and pray together. Just taking time to draw some strength from a psalm. Today, we'd like to turn our attention to Psalm 121. It's referred to as a song of ascents. So really, this, you'll find some of these psalms in the book of Psalms referred to as song of ascents. So it really refers to a song that people would sing as they went up to the house of the Lord. So you could imagine people going up the hill to the place of worship, or in some cases, they may climb up a few steps to ascend to the hill of the Lord, so to speak, to go to the high place, the high point uh, where they offer worship. And here's a song of ascents, a song that leads people up into that place. But it also is a psalm that, uh, that the psalmist is, is, is using now uh, to express his trust in God uh, as from a far off place. So he is not in that place necessarily of walking up the hill of the Lord, but he's looking towards that and then he's expressing his heart towards God. Verse 1, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. Psalm 121, verse 1. The psalmist says, I'm going to turn my eyes toward the hills. So here, it's referring to Jerusalem, which was situated in, in, in some sense in the hilly area up on the hills. And he's saying, I'm turning my eyes up towards the hills, towards the place of the temple of God, the place where God dwells, because my help comes from God. So he's turning his attention towards God himself. Verse 2, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So in this psalm of ascent, in this psalm of turning towards God, his first positioning is, I'm turning my attention to God because my help comes from the Lord. And he recognizes who this Lord is. He is the maker of heaven and earth. Let's take some time to think about that. You know, when you and I need help, and of course we need help in various things in life, Maybe you need help to solve a problem. Maybe you need help to make, go through a challenge. Maybe you need help just to come up with an idea or uh, do something new, do something different. Whatever that help you need uh, in, area of help you need in. The Bible says the person who helps us is the Lord who is the maker of heaven and earth. That means here is God who is creator. And he is more than able. 
to provide help to us. Whatever that help is, God is more than able to bring that help into our lives. He is the maker. He is the creator of heaven and earth. And he is definitely able to help you and me. And in the next few verses, the psalmist talks about God's protection. He repeats this over and over again. Verse 3, He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. God is the God who keeps us. That word keep is the word shamar, which simply means to properly hedge around, you know, to put a hedge uh, of protection as you would put a fencing around something. So God will fence you, fence you in in order to protect you, uh, in order to guard you. And the same word, shamar, which is translated keep or preserve, is used almost in every one of the remaining verses. He says uh, here in verse 3, He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He says, my help comes from God. And this is who God is. He's not going to let my foot be shaken. Moved means shaken or caused to stumble. God is with me. He's helping me. He will not cause me to stumble. He will not allow me to stumble. And he will keep me. He will guard me. He will protect me. And the one who protects me is not going to fall asleep. He's not going to be absent when I need his protection. Or he's not going to be missing when I need his protection. That's my God. He's a constant help. He's a sure help. He will protect. Then he says in verse 4, Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. So God is your keeper. The same word shamar he is your protector. He's the one who guards you. And he guards you in such a manner that neither in the day nor at night can anything harm you. And so we need to come into that place of trusting God's protection over our lives. When things threaten your life, whether it's physical danger or some other form of danger, trust in God's protection, that the God who protects you will neither slumber nor sleep. That the God who is your keeper, he will so protect you that neither during the day or night can anything harm you or befall you. Trust in that. Declare that, that God is my protector. When you sense evil attempting to come against you, when you feel threatened, when you feel uh, fearful thoughts coming into your mind, uh, that thoughts of harm, thoughts of danger, say this out loud and bold. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord will neither slumber nor sleep. He will not allow anything by day or by night to attack me, to, uh, to steal me, to hurt me, because the Lord is my keeper. He is the one who is protecting me. He is the one who is guarding me. In verses 7 and 8, the Lord will preserve you from all evil. He will preserve your soul. The Lord will preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. He says in verse 7, God will protect me from all evil, from all kinds of evil. The Lord will preserve me. Then in verse 8, he says, the Lord will pr protect me at all times. When I go out, when I come in, he will preserve me at all times. In whatever I'm doing, God will be my protector. So Psalm 121 is a beautiful psalm that teaches us about God's protection over our lives. So when you feel afraid, when you feel danger lurking near you, threatened that something will harm you, remember Psalm 121. Say it out loud. The Lord will preserve me from all evil. The Lord will preserve me in my going out, in my coming in. The Lord will preserve me at all times. He will keep me from all evil. He will not let my foot to be shaken. The Lord will preserve my going out and my coming in. 
you declare that because my help comes from the Lord who is the maker of heaven and earth. He's the one who is above everything, above all. Remember Psalm 121. When you desire God's help, God's protection, your help comes from the Lord. He is your maker. He is your protector. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the psalm. We thank you for the assurance of your divine protection over our lives, that you preserve us. And we declare that over our lives, that the Lord is our keeper. The Lord preserves us from all evil. That no weapon formed against us will prosper. That every scheme, every device of the enemy against us is nullified, is negated. And God, that we are divinely protected by the maker of heaven and earth. We thank you for this protection over our lives. We thank you for your angels that stand guard over us. And we trust, Heavenly Father, in your protection. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with us on the program today. And until next time, remember, live life to Jesus' way.
Your love is so much better than life. In you, Lord, our needs are satisfied. So our lips begin to praise as we lift our hands and pray. Your love is so much better than love. A leader in the kingdom is not a big shot. You pay the biggest price. You're willing to face the fire if something goes wrong. You're willing to be accountable for other people's lives if something goes wrong with them you are held responsible you set the standard raise it high the heart of a servant willing to serve people counts a lot the willingness to walk under authority and in humility counts a lot then you're ready for leadership in the house of God Hi there, we're just delighted to introduce to you our free church app. The main highlight of our church app is what we call the toolkit, which has eight powerful sections filled with the word of God for you. We have a section called gospel with tools to help you share the gospel with your friends. We give you videos. We have a section called reasons where we provide answers for commonly asked questions that you might encounter. When people ask you, how do you know that God exists? How do you know that God created everything? Why do you believe Jesus Christ is unique and so on? Questions that you need that you will face and there are answers there. We have a section called Faith Builders where we list scriptures on various areas of the Christian life to help build your faith and make your declaration and act on the word of God. We have a section called Identity where we give you all the scriptures that you need to know to establish your personal identity of who you are in Christ. We firmly believe that who you are in Christ is who you really are. Uh, there's a section called on how to where we give you instructions or guidelines on how to do various aspects of ministry. How do you minister healing? How do you minister deliverance? How do you lead somebody into the baptism of the Holy Spirit and several other areas that you would encounter in ministry. We have a section called group study guides where we give you several guides to be used in small groups to study the word of God together on various topics and themes and this, this will keep on growing. We have a section called Principles where we give you the Word of God to help you uh, make right choices and decisions as you encounter various scenarios in everyday life. And then we have a section called Lifestyle uh, where it tells you the, what the Bible says on various issues that you may face in life. And so this toolkit is something that's really important that you'll keep coming back using almost on a day-to-day -day basis. In addition to the toolkit, we of course have all our sermons available to you, the audio, the video, the sermon notes and the series. We have our TV programs available on the app so that you can watch it anywhere, on demand, anytime. We have our worship videos so that you can listen to uplifting worship music from our worship band. We have all our books available so you can read the books on your mobile device. And of course, we have the ability to connect to our services live from wherever you are in the world. So make sure you head out to the app or Google Play stores. Search for All People's Church Bangalore. Download the app right away. Enjoy the journey. I'm sure it's going to be a great blessing to you. Imagine a world without the psalmist, a world without David. We would have lost out on so many of those experiences that these men of God had. Each of them talks about, you know, their unique life experience and their testimony, their, their life struggles, their, their faith and their victories and their battles. These songs are already written, but, um, but now they get to be expounded in a way that it embodies each songwriter's heart and their life story. For me, what was amazing was this recurring theme of God's love that is, you know, weaved through all these songs and um, talks about God's unfailing love, His untiring love. Uh, he's an ever-present God and His love is just so much better than life itself. 
as I was, you know, producing these songs and working on the music, each day just sitting and listening to these life-giving words of, you know, my rock, my tower, my shelter. You know, there's no better way, I think, that I can spend my day. You're my ever-present God.